Good morning. Buenos dias. Good morning. Happy day of remembering our ancestors. Happy day of the dead. It's a very special day for me, for me in my life, in my growing up, because the day of the dead is one thing that we're grateful for in, in our tradition. It's to honor our ancestors, to honor everybody who had to torch the fire that passed it on to us. I remember being young and seeing everybody celebrating the Day of the Dead, playing guitar, painting their face, beautiful amount of infinite colors everywhere. And one of the most beautiful things was getting the picture of our loved ones, putting them in the altar, because the belief it is that in the Day of the Dead, that night where everybody's celebrating and putting the altar, the spirit of the ancestors, for is the mythology, the, the story, the spirit of our ancestors come following the candy and they come to the altar in blessing us. Such a beautiful story, beautiful day of honoring. But you know, the truth it is, is that all our ancestors who have transcended, they're always with us. They have never left. They're always the feeling inside of us knowing that we're not alone is because they're there inside of us. The saying that there's a hundred ancestors walking behind us that <laughs> my mother just called. <laughs> um, one of the most beautiful thing about feeling our ancestors is that they're always alive with us. And the saying that they say that there's a hundred ancestors talking behind us, walking behind us, is because, you know, they're there, passing the torch. And the beautiful thing about this is that they want us to celebrate life. So at one point, the day of the dead for me was to celebrate our loved ones until I begin learning it from my family's point of view. And what's my family's point of view? Well, it is that the day of the dead is a reminder for all of us who are in life dead. And I go, that is strange, what do you mean? I said to my father and to my grandmother, well, it's very simple. Why? It's because see all the fears that you have. And you know, you're an adult now. See all the fears that you have had ever since you were a teenager and an adult now, and things that you don't want to do. Things that you punish yourself, things that you judge yourself, you feel guilt and shame and you paralyze yourself that you're not alive. You always have the excuses of why not to live life or why to live your dreams because you are dead. It's because in the moment that you want to experience something and live it, your excuses kill it right away. So the thing of the day of the dead is our ancestors inside of us, inside our memories, inside of our heart and all our surrounding is that they're telling us that we are not dead yet, that we are alive and it's time to take them with them so we can experience and get creative and feel the most beautiful expansion of the divine dream happening. And why do I mean expansion? It's because that's what we're doing. Aware or unaware, we're expanding a beautiful dream, especially the dream of our lineage. The lineage, what I'm talking about, the lineage of love. Forget the Toltec lineage. Forget any kind of lineage. It's about the human lineage and we wake up. So the day of the dead for me is the moment that we realize that we are alive and that we once was dead. At one point in my you know, training, I got a picture of myself and I placed it in the Day of the Dead altar. And one of my little friends says, Jose, you're not dead yet. Why do you put yourself in the altar of the Day of the Dead? Well, I go, I'm alive now. But that character that you see in that painting, in that picture, in that altar, used to be dead. It is dead because it doesn't exist anymore. You know, I thought that I was that person feeling all this guilt, all this shame. You know, all the, everything bad that happened to me, I was keeping it alive, so I was dead in life. But now, I believe in resurrection. And resurrection is not about dying and becoming somebody else. No, resurrection is waking up, coming back to life in the same life. Imagine coming back in the same life, resurrecting in the same life. You have all this awareness. And like a little example that I can give, imagine resurrecting from a relationship that you had, that you were married for 20, 10 years, and then when that relationship was over, if it was someone went home to heaven or, you know, it's just a breakup, but that relationship end. It doesn't matter, it's a dead relationship. But how many times do we say we're not gonna love again? We're not gonna open our heart again, you know? What if we died in that relationship and close our heart forever, not permitting us, you know, to express what we feel inside anymore? The beautiful thing it is, when any relationship ends, Life continues on, and we have the awareness of that relationship to not make those errors of hurting ourselves and others 
in the name of love. Now we get love in our behalf. Now we get love in our side. And now we are coloring the canvas of our life with love. And that's what the beautiful thing about putting flowers in the cemeteries, putting flowers in the altar is because we're coloring our ancestors with life. So just imagine when you go in deep meditation and you close your eyes and you see all the stories that are keeping you from being alive, all the darkness that is stopping you from expressing your light, you are aware of it now. You can support it or not support it. If you support it, you will maintain a sleep with so many great excuses to maintain a sleep because you're about to wake up and you don't want to, but the moment that you decide to wake up, you open your eyes and see yourself like you have died and resurrected. So the resurrection is having all your memories from the previous relationship, from the previous job, from all those friendship, life continues on. And the way to respect my grandmother, my stepmother, and all my other ancestors, it is to not use their death against myself. The better way to, to respect that relationship that I was in is to not you know, hurt myself with that relationship because that relationship it is over. And how do I respect it by not recreate it again? And here's what I'm coming from now. The day of the dead gives us awareness that we were once dead, now we're back to life. Now we are reminding everybody that they are alive as well. So the Totec teachings you can see that it's about reminding everybody it's not a dogma, it's not a religion, it's not a way of life. No one's converting anybody. We're not saying that our way is the best way. No, our way is one way in a billion, seven billions of ways. But the beautiful thing of each way is somebody who was once dead. Why a challenge? Because it's challenging. When you wake up from a dream, from a nightmare, and you want to you know, overcome your life, it's challenging because you feel the butterfly. So in this moment, I invite you to take the walk of the butterflies every time this happens. And what is the walk of the butterflies? Well, imagine having all these billions of butterflies inside of us and we feel the nervousness. We feel the nervous system. We feel the love. We feel the anxiety. We feel everything that the body feels. And it's natural to feel. We're not going to suppress our body or Mother Earth anymore. We're not going to suppress ourselves. We're going to feel all the butterflies. But in feeling them, it let us be aware what is what we need to change? What is that we need to overcome? And where it is where we need our own support? Because have you ever imagined having your own support? Really, just think about this. Having your own support, knowing this is good for me, this is bad for me, this inspires me, this uninspires me. Why would I want to keep a dream that uninspires me alive? I let it go. And this is what I was letting the little kid see me in my little picture on my altar the day of the dead. That it is what I was, that picture. It's no longer me. But everybody who knew that Jose can come back, everybody who has wounds of that Jose can come and says, this Jose is like this, it will never change, it will never be like this because what if I feel guilt and shame and I surrender. I give myself up to that secondary character that I'm in their head, how the person judges me. And I become that reality because I begin judging myself. I am dead. So this is where I'm talking from. I lived my life, my whole life in certain ways of this, many bubbles of this, giving my power away, sacrificing myself, being buried alive. But in this moment, I come to tell you there is no more human sacrifice because the human sacrifice will end in me. And I do not mean about that barbaric things that the ancestors did with the Aztecs or the Mayans taking the heart out and sharing it to the sun. No, that's barbaric. What I'm doing, it is honoring myself to not sacrifice myself in life so I can continue to be alive. And the omen, the metaphor, the painting of the human taking his heart out and offering to the sun is because the sun has blessed my heart. Could you imagine knowing that the sun and the moon bless your heart every day and every night for you to have the awareness so you can take care of yourself and be at service to the love of your life. And this is what resurrection is all about. You know, it's very interesting that in November, November 3rd, the day before the crucifixion, of the death of Christ and the resurrection of Christ. And just to put as a metaphor, as an explanation to describe human life. First, we become aware of what is not serving us in life anymore. Then we begin celebrating the day of the dead, knowing that we're not dead, that we are alive. Then everything, all the excuses, all the temptations going to come and hit us. 
Now it's a will against temptation. And of course, the day of the crucifixion is because Jesus believed in his dream. And that's the most powerful thing about that story is that the human's love for the creator was so big that nothing of human made, human greed was able to overcome this human because his love was so big that, you know, it transcended being, you know, murdered. And then it came back. It came back after he was murdered. And why? It's because the dream killed what was left of him. But when, when that happened, he became the Christ in a most vibrant and more ripples energy that exists. And the resurrection happened a few days later. So the resurrection was in the April. So in the Christmas time in December is when all these things happen, you know, when the transformation happened. So Christmas is an interesting point of celebrating a new life. And this is what we're doing now. In the Totec tradition, it's something similar. That's why we celebrate the new year, a dawn of a new dream every year in Teotihuacan. But this year, you know, we let life be because our person needs to be somewhere else. And this is how we surrender. But we're not going to stop celebrating because we're always at service. So dawn of a new dream is when you wake up completely to let go the dead dream that you thought you were and the alive dream that you thought you were because now you are alive, not caring to know what you are. You just are life. And when you know that you are alive, you begin to be clear in your path because you're illuminating all the ways. The day of the dead, such a powerful moment, such a powerful meaning. The day where humans come back to life. Are you ready to celebrate the day of the dead? Are you ready to celebrate and honor your loved ones? Because when we live a happy life, when we overcome our suffering, our loved ones, their heart just glows and our aura just begins getting bigger and bigger. And our inspiration is just, you know, infinite because it's pure. It's not force. You know, you cannot force creativity. It just comes. You cannot force a baby. You need, you know, love making to make a baby. So you need to Feel the love within yourself to make the most beautiful baby out of love. And once you have the baby, it's not the end. It's the beginning. It's the beginning of a new dream. Hear what I mean? Your dream. My dream. Our dream together. And if we take care of our dream as a collective, together we merge all our dreams and becomes a paradise once again. Could you imagine making your life a paradise, making your life a masterpiece of art. Your whole life becomes a prayer. Everything that you do, you're a living prayer because your positivity goes everywhere it goes. At the same time, your negativity becomes tested because it gets tempted. But by you overcoming yourself and being loyal to the love of your life, doing the butterfly walk, doing all the butterflies, you can begin getting centered. And no matter how uncomfortable the story it is, no matter how terrifying the story could be, we never forget what we truly are. We're the healers and we have an antidote, an antidote to any problem. Because people love problems. People don't like to resolve problems either. They like to complain about problems, complain about their life, but never use the power of imagination the power of storytelling, the power of loving kindness, like you say, Sister Melly, because this it is what we're here for, to stand up and to be there for our true selves. And who's our true self? Ourselves. So I can go on and on, you know, telling you about my life, all the suffering that I went through, all the happiness that I went through, but you know, it's, <coughs> both are over, both are over. Both are gone. They're not real anymore. And the moment that we become aware of that, we're no longer going to give them that power to continue to be making us think that we're dead. Today is the most beautiful opportunity to honor life by waking up from a dead world, from a dead dream. You know? Mm, my puppy's already feeling alive. And my puppy is just a puppy. It doesn't have to be perfect for the camera, you know? It doesn't have to be perfect for silence because everything is perfect. The interesting part when we think that things are not perfect is when we try to control life. We cannot control life. 
Why would I take the puppy's experience from barking just because I'm doing my dream? Or why would I take my brother's and sister's experience away from them just because I'm doing my dream? Or why should I, you know, play a song and they shouldn't play a song because I want to play a song? No, everybody has to play their own song. Everybody has to be their true self. Everybody has to speak because if you don't speak, you can never hear yourself. And that's the beautiful thing that we're breaking in the day of the dead. We're breaking the voice that we stop and paralyze ourselves because this time is the day that we wake up to expand our wings. And when we expand our wings, we'll fly because we were once a falling angel, but the falling angel path was perfect because he learned how to get his own wings again and not like Icarus. Icarus got somebody else's wings to touch the sun and every time he tried to touch the sun, its wings burned because it wasn't its own wings. We have to fly and touch the sun with our own wings, with our own heart, with our own poetry, with our own willing desire, that inspiration that's within us, that is the feathered serpent mythology and meaning to do the impossible. And in the dream of the planet, to do the impossible is to be happy. Is to be happy. Is to not suffer. Life is life. Spider webs exist, and a spider exists, and whatever's going to get caught in a spider web exists too. But it's just life. We are life too. We can learn from all those experiences that we had that make us dead. But now that we are living, we purify all those seeds of those negative dreams. And it's like a magician, like a swami or a shaman. Gets all those seeds, puts his magic on it, puts his intent, its love, and turn that negativity into positivity to show the young ones the path. And one day, we're not gonna be alive, but we will be standing behind the little ones, the next generation, just like our ancestors stand behind us. And life continues to be where energy and energy will always need a container to contain itself. Because after the barking is over, there's peace. <laughs> and after the barking is over right here in our mind. All the judgment, all the guilt and shame, all the self-guilt, the self-punishment, after we overcome that, knowing that that was perfect because that's a human dream, we overcome it and see and have power over ourselves because we wake up. And once we wake up, we can never go back to sleep. And when you are aware that you can never go back to sleep, you become the most powerful guide in your life because you're guiding yourself through the darkness of life. And the darkness of life will not stop you from celebrating life because you know their world is not of your world. Your kingdom is what you make of it. And everything is illusion anyways. Let's honor every tradition. Let's honor every path. So our path and tradition will be always honored because at the final day of the artist is all about respect. You respect my art, I respect your art, and we respect everybody's art. And this is why I say as a collective, we all get together and make this beautiful dream a masterpiece of art. And today is the day of the dead. So I would like you to do me one favor. Get a notepad and in a pen with your own energy, begin putting that force into the ink, into a paper identifying what you don't want in your life anymore. So you can be identifying it. And this paper being written is not for anybody else but for you. And once you write it down, knowing that that it is now in the hands of the angel of death, and the angel of death is not entity outside of us taking life force away, no. We all are the angel of death. Each human is the angel of death. And what we're letting go is the dream that we believe that we used to be right now. We're ending the dream by being aware of what's stopping us from shining. Because today's the day of the dead, isn't it? It's the day that we come back to life and enjoy every moment. Just like Ebenezer Scrooge, I love that story going to Christmas times. But you know, after Ebenezer Scrooge had the day of the dead, he saw his life as he was beginning. He saw his life in the now, and he saw where his life was going in the future. So in that moment, he had an epiphany. He knew that he was dead once, and he came back to life. And no matter what his program was, it was over because he came back as the savior of his own life. Just like you are the savior of your own life, and I am the savior of my own life. And there's nobody's business how we heal unless we're starting to heal. And when we start to heal, this is the moment that we know that we're not alone because we have 
ourselves in our side. And we have ourselves in our side. We know that we are the love of our life. We don't need low love from the other side to, you know, feed us because we feed ourselves. But when we feed ourselves, we can be truly there for the people that we love. Not because we want them to like us or, you know, we make, make um, something to, you know, to like us, you know, or, or buy their like or buy their friendship. No, I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is true giving. When you want to give something from your heart without returning it, that's the most beautiful thing that we can give to the children, no? Because when we give to the children, we don't expect nothing in return from them. We just want them to see them happy and shining. And this is, once again, I repeat, what our ancestors always try to teach us in the Toltec tradition. The artists that have transcended creating art from beyond are teaching us to create art in this realm, in this dream. And what better service to create our art from a heart, no? What best way and honor that we can wake up to experience this bliss and beauty because this is heaven, my, my brothers and sisters. This is heaven. When we get this epiphany of feeling alive and being grateful to be alive, that is enlightenment. That's why many people have that experience and become enlightened because they have another opportunity to be alive. Let's not waste it. Let's resurrect all of us together and show our ancestors how we celebrate the death by celebrating life. Because the real fear in life is not to die, it's to be alive and feel all the butterflies, all the nervous systems, all the emotions. But the emotions is how Mother Earth, the body, talks to us. So when we wake up, we know that we're here on vacation. And when we are here on vacation, we can detach. And like Buddha said, in life, what matters most is how well we live, how well we love, and how well we learn to let go. So everything that you wrote in the piece of paper in your own way, learn to let go. No, it doesn't serve you anymore. And resurrect to create more magic, new dream. And the beautiful thing is that you're gonna experience it. And that's the gift of life, to experience what we feel in the heart and overcome. Because it is, it is challenging. It is sometimes scary. It's sometimes things fearful, you know, trying to do a new dream. Like I just left an old dream. I'm starting to do a new dream. And I feel excited. I can paralyze myself. I can feel a little fear. But it's just emotion that I will overcome. Because when we get comfortable in uncomfortableness, we get comfortable once again. And sometimes, you know, giving birth feels uncomfortable, you know, like my mother used to say, but it's so worth it because she sees her children growing up, expressing the love from beyond the mind, beyond thought. It's just human condition. And when we all master our human condition, we're no longer dead. We're alive like the sun, shining bright, just like yesterday. <laughs> well, I call Sunday the day of the sun because I like to make fun, I like to laugh, I like to celebrate, because that's one of the most beautiful things, to not take everything too seriously. Growing, healing, doesn't have to be serious, thing. it's to remember to smile. And when you get that smile, it's like you're back in the playground, but with awareness. And with that awareness, you will share with the other kids, you know, the beautiful games to play. <laughs> well, I give you my thank yous, my love and gratitude for giving me of your time and for listening and for helping me love what I love to do because this makes me feel alive. This helps me, you know, to share the art from the heart and I don't know who's watching, but I'm grateful that you're watching and because I continue on creating and I feel that we are, you know, together working for the same boss and I can't wait to go back, you know, to, to remote, but until that day happens, we have the internet, we have the international, you know, dreams that people are in collective and we'll find a way to get our message out there because there's nothing that's gonna stop us from loving what we love to do, not even ourselves. And the day that we master this is the day that we're celebrating life. Grateful to the day of the dead. Om Eteo, Om Sairam, Shiva Shakti to spirit, amen. I see you next Monday and thank you again. I was so happy that, that the day after day came in Life Monday's day because, you know, <laughs> I, it's a very beautiful 
uh, two people, two energies coming together to share. And I was just couldn't wait to, to get my, <laughs> my heart uh, passing to you. And well, I can go on and on and talking more. Like my grandma used to say, I can talk for, I have nothing to say, but talk for another hour. So I just have to say, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for helping me to do what I love to do in my life. See you next week. And remember, you are the love of your life. It's time to resurrect and live your dream and share the little ones how it's done. <laughs> okay.